Hello and thank you again for joining us in our webcast. We have tonight uh, the closure of the uh, summer season at OVO. Mr. Nick Simon and Nico Izzo. Welcome to both of you. How are you tonight? Good, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I arrived uh, from London yesterday uh, into Buenos Aires. I played Buenos Aires last night. Came here this afternoon. I managed to get some sleep, so I feel a little bit better now and I'm ready for the, for the final party over tonight. We know that uh, tours are usually hard. Uh, do you get too much of sleep uh, one day or another? Or? Uh, yeah, I try. You know. <laughs> Last night was particularly difficult because uh, my flight from London was cancelled on Thursday night. So I, I literally arrived into Buenos Aires at 1 o'clock yesterday morning after the 13 hour flight and went straight to the club. So I needed some sleep today. But I, I'm okay now. I've had six hours. It's good. That's good for a weekend. Okay. Now, this is the first time that we have an interview in English with two DJs at the same time. So we'll make it entirely in English, so we'll add the subtitles. My Spanish is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> my Spanish is malo. <laughs> Good. Nico, tell us about your origins as a DJ and uh, your then uh, artist management career. Well, I've been playing for a long time, I mean, the 19th. Um, but actually, I come here in 2000, I think, to play. and. After 15 years, it was a long time coming here back, so I'm really enjoying it for tonight. So. What can you tell me about then your um, agency, Closure Artists? What's uh, the purpose of it? Why did you start it? Well, I started that in uh, 2006, something like that, for the Barcelona bookings and La Terraza, the club there. And after we bring closure from South America and we started doing parties around here and now it's, it's going really well. But actually I leave uh, the agency in 2011, but now we keep doing stuff there. It's, it's pretty good actually. Yeah. Good. Our next question then to Dave. What can you tell me about Leeds, a city that you really must know well? About Leeds? Uh, well, we lost again today. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it's my hometown, you know, and, uh, but I left a long, long time ago. You know, I left to go down to London when I was 19. So, uh, but the city is growing up very, very fast. There's lots of good things going on there. And the football team will be back in the Premiership soon. You watch, you watch. <laughs> How about house music? It was one of the first uh, places in the UK uh, to play those records. Yeah, the north of England really embraced house music uh, probably earlier than than the south of England, actually. So uh, there was a lot of good clubs. I'm actually going back to play at the warehouse uh, in, a, in a couple of months' time, which is one of the original Leeds clubs. It's still going, still going strong. And um, so I'm really, really looking forward to getting that's, that's kind of the first place I went clubbing, really. That and the Hacienda in Manchester, which obviously isn't there anymore. But uh, yeah, Leeds has got a strong scene. It has. It's been, uh, there's a lot of good clubs there, and it's been really strong for the last 20 years or so. What can you tell me about, for example, other clubs that started in the area like Hard Times? Hard Times are back doing parties again. Yeah, they, they had a little bit of a break for a while. But there's a, actually a big revival in the UK at the moment for these old clubs and classics nights, you know. There's a lot of classics nights, a lot of people who are, you know, 35 to 45 who don't go out anymore because they've got married and they've got kids and now they're kind of, you know, the kids have maybe grown up a little bit and they're like, okay, let's go clubbing again, you know. So there's a big, big classics uh, thing, circuit going on in the UK and um, so yeah, there's uh, Hard Times is one of those that uh, are bringing people back again. So it's a family outing, right? Well, I don't know whether the kids are going yet. The babysitters are taking care of the kids, I think. And the parents are having one last rave. <laughs> what can you tell me then about uh, the two labels that I have identified from you? One is then Stress Records and the other one is Therapy. What's their purpose? Well, they, yeah, Stress Records I did in the 90s and uh, Audio Therapy in the noughties. Uh, but now I run Celador Recordings, which is the new one we started a couple of years ago with my friend Steve Parry from Liverpool. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I enjoy running record labels. It's, uh, it's a labor of love. You don't really make any money from it, but it's uh, it's good fun. I enjoy it, you know? And it kind of feeds the DJ in and uh, feeds the production side of things. They all kind of work together nicely. And it's nice to be able to, to you know, find young producers and uh, give them a, a platform to release their music. It's, uh, it's, it's something, it's like a hobby, really. A hobby that takes a lot of time. 
<laughs> a busy hub again. It really is. Now, let's switch then back to you again. Uh, what can you tell me about then your uh, residency at La Terraza? What has been so far the biggest challenge? Well, I mean, it was um, 10 years resident there. I mean, it was a long time and it's really, really nice club. I love it. And th this year we have a 20 year celebration and it's going to be a busy, a busy season. Yeah. But I mean, La Terraza is a really famous club in Barcelona. Actually, um, it's, you know that you've been there. No, but the internet you exists. <laughs> and you find yourself. But no, I mean, it's an amazing club. I am really happy to be resident there. I mean, it's a long time. I have a lot of friends there. Actually, this year uh, we are going to do a new album with Nick Warren. It's going to be the 20 year celebration. It's going to be out in July, I think. So it's going to be great. I am so excited about that. Everybody should be. Especially if you have followed the Nick Warren's career as a DJ and a producer. Yeah. Excited, so excited. It's going to be great. Good. Next question then to uh, Dave. You have been featured in um, three CD compilations. Uh, that is Global Underground, uh, the 12th edition, the 16th edition and the 22nd one. And the 39th. And the 39th, that's true. <laughs> I forgot that one. <laughs> so fourth, what makes you keep coming back? Uh, I, I, I just really enjoy doing mixed compilations, you know, it gives you a chance to, uh, to I mean, you know, there's, there's sets on SoundCloud every week, you know, but like to do a, a physical CD that people can keep in their collections that won't get lost in the cloud, you know, uh, is, is uh, something, it's like a, a document of the time, you know, of that of that particular time in, in my DJing career. So, and it gives you a chance to really do something special as well. It's not like doing a live set every week. You can spend time manipulating everything. You can edit all the tracks and make a, it's like an audio collage, really. You spend a long, long time making everything gel together perfectly. Um, and, you know, with Ableton, you can you can do that now. And I think a lot of people say, oh, you know, you, you, know, you should just do more live sets. And But people can, you can go see a DJ live every week, you know. If it's a CD, you know, it's a chance to really do something extra special. Go the extra mile and, uh, and, and you know, leave it as a as a legacy of, uh, of that, that time. Right. There has been an inversion of certain realities because sometimes, some years ago, it was the most usual to have a CD and it was the exception to see a live DJ. Now you see it live everywhere and yeah. then the rare thing is to see a physical yeah. CD. Well, that's because live is where the money's at. <laughs> Everybody wants to play live now because that's what, that's what, how you make your living, you know. You can't really make money uh, doing CDs or making music generally. You, know, you kind of make music to get the gigs to go on tour. That's uh, used to be the other way around. You used to make an album and you used to go on tour to promote the album, to sell copies of the, uh, of the, uh, the album, but not anymore, you know, things have changed. So uh, yeah, CDs are a rarity now, you know. Um, but I hope the, the format is still, still going, going uh, with, you know, things like Fabric and, and uh, DJ Kicks and things like that, you know. Um, so I hope that the format continues because eventually I think that the, the physical format will come back. I think, uh, well, you've already seen in the UK last year, vinyl sales were up 40%, you know, so I think eventually when you can get any music, as much music as you want, that quick, that instantly, then when you get to that point, then where do you go, you know? <laughs> you can get anything you want, like, so I think people will come back to collecting, collecting things again. I, I hope so anyway, you know, I hope so. It would be a good thing to know then I to see so. that uh, those sales then go up again, right? I think so. I think I think I think guys especially like to collect things. I see with my kids, you know, they like to collect the football cards, you know. And so I think, and when you can't really collect, a, make a collection on your in iTunes, it's not a real collection, you know. So I think I think physical, whether it be CD or a different format, or, or vinyl or whatever, I think I think people will start collecting again. They are, they are. Vinyl is up, yeah. What are your plans then for 2015 when this tour finishes? Uh, I've got a lot of gigs again. Uh, I'm pretty busy for the next few months. I've got a lot of releases coming up. I've got an EP coming out on Noir, uh, uh, Noir Music and uh, track on Hive Audio and Tulipa and Sullivan Rooms. So that's all, all coming up. And then uh, I've got the, the label Celador as well. So we'll be busy with that. So between, between touring and making music and 
and releasing stuff. So I think that'll keep me that'll keep me busy for the next few months anyway. Well, we have to thank Dave for these precious minutes. We know that the time is tight when you're on tour, and also to Nico. Nico, what can you tell us about your year uh, ahead, the entire year of 2015? What's your plan? Well, right now I have a few gigs in South America until April and then go to Europe and start a season in Barcelona. We have a really busy uh, sonar week. It's really, yeah, lovely week. Crazy, but lovely. Um, I'm going to be in Europe until uh, October, I think, and then back to South America again to tour around here. So it's going to be fun, like always. Yes. So busy and fun for these two gentlemen. We have Nick Oyser and Dev Seaman. We have to thank all of our audience then, uh, from the bottom of our hearts, that you took the time to talk to us today, okay? As soon as we have these ready, and subtitle will let you know so everybody can see. Thank you then so much. You're welcome. Pleasure. My pleasure as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>